Welcome back everybody here to your broadcast, the Dota 2 Champions League. I'm your host for the English live stream, Toby One, bringing you game at number three. Our final deciding matchup between the Peruvians and the North Americans. It's Navi US going up against the boys called Not Today. And we'll see if they can come through here in game number three. The Peruvians or the US, either way, both teams want a piece. Let's see how we go together. My co-caster and the man that brings logic to this broadcast is Clairvoyance. Welcome back to the broadcast, man. Oh, did I, did I lose him? I lost him. I lost him. <laughs> All right, maybe a bit of a misclick either way. Uh, Clairvoyance, welcome back. Sorry, man, I didn't oh. I lost you. Woof. Glad to be back here, man. Thought I got zoned out again, but here we are, Toby. Game three, and I'm not too sure what you talked about yet, but Terrorblade getting its first mention. Third game. Yeah, first man. but n not the mention you would have really thought it was going to. Like, you go through two rounds, and... Uh, <sighs> Terrible is not banned, and he's not even Dyer picked. And yeah. then you decide to just ban him in the first two. It's like, yep. m maybe now the US knows something about Not Today that isn't as obvious, where maybe it's like this go-to kind of hero in the third game of a best of three kind of series, now which Not Today US would experiment with. To Actually, I think, uh, I think all that they said to themselves in the break is, uh, we want to give either Ra Razor or Death Prophet, and then just take the other one and take Centaur. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the plan. So they just wanted to have like a wash ban. I mean, it could have been a Jakiro ban or a Vengeful remaining. Spirit ban. It would have made more sense. But I think they're comfortable letting Not Today get those Five heroes for remaining. whatever reason. I, I mean, they, I they did lose to game one, but... I'd be really concerned with giving them those heroes because Not Today played their game too. They banned Skyrath, they banned Viper. And then because of that, you get Death Prophet and Jakiro together. That, that, yeah. whole, that whole, uh, Not Today don't really have great pushing power now just turns around completely. And you got Death Prophet up against Razor. Take all the damage you want from her. She's still going to do a lot of physical DPS with that exorcism of hers. Yeah, that Not Today's lineup is looking phenomenal right now, simply put. Dying the thing is, though, Razor, Razor Centaur is really, really powerful together as well. And it, it's, get, it's gotten to that point with Razors and Death Prophets in lineups and heroes like Jakiro, which are kind of like, they're tier 1s, but they're not tier S, like Razor and Death Prophet. Centaur is the same thing, tier 1. Now, I would, I would actually argue that Centaur is a tier S hero, but you have to play him well. So there is a Navi execution back there. But the thing with these heroes now is that uh, they have ways to cancel each other out due to their awesomeness, like due to the things that they excel at. Like the way for a, a Death Prophet to deal with Razor is by her amazing right clicks, her decent animation, seconds, long remaining. range, and most importantly, that nuke that costs very little mana, mm -hmm. which allows you to spam Five and secure runes. Remaining. And for the same thing for Razor, it's like before you used to have these targets that you're going up against that if you miss your static link, you would have trouble. But then figure, people figured out, oh wait, I don't have to commit to maxing this static link. Why don't I just get this Plasma Field nuke that does 300 damage at level 3, clears half of the creep wave as soon as I cast it, and then use my link as merely a zoning tool. And it just develops this way. You know, a lot of these heroes, usually when they lose one way, they either find the other way or they just get eliminated from the meta. And Ember Spirit's another good example. After Sing Sing introduced the, the QW build with the Sleight of Fist as well as the, the Searing Chains, you know, that got nerfed. And then people started going back to the old Flame Guard build. And that's still very powerful as it is today. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Flame Guard build is just one of those things where you can tank up so much with it. It's... Oh, it's so, so strong, Toby. Mm. It's so good. It makes it makes a BKB first Ember Spirit viable. Seriously. You get a phase boots, you get a drums, you get a BKB. You just walk in with this Iron Shield that has 400 AoE. It's almost like a Radiance in team fight. And the hero is so elusive already. It's just an amazing fighting hero. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of... I kind of like stay on the side of the fence if I really like the Ember Spirit or not because he just seemed to be way too powerful jumping across the lanes. But one thing he always said was either make teams commit or make teams fully fall back. 
Like that was that was at least to be like a proper decision, and and he would really expose these teams that got caught halfway without making a full team decision about that. Yeah, yeah. His chase potential and everything. It's that's a good hero. I mean, he has counters. He has more counters than a lot of these heroes that are picked for sure. But uh, by his design, I think. Um, I mean, when I spoke to PPD, I agree with him in this line of thought. It's he's his design is like not that of a Dota hero. You know what I mean? It seems like. I mean, Dota's pretty out there when it comes to some of these spells. You know, you got big Wisp relocates, you got Ravages that hit everything. But yeah, but Ember Spirit really is. It's it's one of those heroes that kind of seem out there. You know, they're they're definitely very unique. Yeah, I remember uh, the words from Puppy. This isn't Dota. <laughs> this oh. this is this is not a Dota hero. I, I don't yeah. I don't understand why this hero is in here. He's not Dota. Uh, like that's kind of fair he enough. is though i mean he's a he's a pretty i would say he's a pretty balanced hero overall i mean defining balance as a whole is difficult but it's five seconds it's, it's I, a I, good was, hero. I was the last where the most balanced hero of all is where is pit lord <laughs> <laughs> that hero come on toby you can't even make a joke about that that hero at certain parts of the game he is not balanced he, yeah. he, oh 100 he, he's, he's just not balanced right? 100 <laughs> i'm not gonna disagree with you uh, uh, all I, all I'm saying is, US where is our Warcraft 3 heroes? <laughs> I mean, all, all I can say is, you got like a 800, 1000 range black hole that you cast without channeling, and and you got this dark portal spell that, hey, and as you would say, surprise, something, something, and boom, targets are dead, buildings are dead, what do you do? Nothing. <laughs> Die. Uh, that's a fun hero, man. That's a fun Ten hero. I, 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 would, I wish him back. I just wish him back because you had a new hero like that. Like, you had Terrorblade, and I thought really Terrorblade was going to change the meta a lot more than Legion Commander was going to. Time. And he hasn't. <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't had not any yet. kind of. N not yet. You're right. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. I still actually think on the other flip side of this, where the pool, I think, is. I don't, I don't know if I can say it's as diverse as it used to be. Because we did kind of get ourselves bottlenecked into this Void and Skywrath Mage combination we had. Um, and, and that's kind of opened Windranger up a lot more. Service. These days, like, Windranger would never even consider Navi picking up this hero anymore. Yeah, that Vin hero's not that good, though. <laughs> Vin 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 yeah, well, then again, now Shackles, which were coming out earlier today, like, you just, uh, you just yeah, get yeah, one, okay, well. you get, like, one or two big Shackle sets, and you can turn an entire team fight, and that's what today's meta is all about. It's turning a huge ass team fight your remaining. way, and the advantage then kicks your kicks in too. Thing with Five Windrunner, Skywrath, Void, like these heroes, they always have to show themselves in the lane, and they always have to commit to landing their spells. Time. So if it's not an execution issue, it's just by the hero design. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say, you know, this is a very this is Dino very contradictory to popular back. belief, but Skywrath and Void, those are overrated heroes right now. Even in the last patch, I mean, I was very against Skywrath doing all the things he did, and one of the things no, that I really, US really appreciated was the fact that Concussive is now disjointable. And that's pretty huge, because you can blink away, and you don't give vision to a Skywrath that just hits you with a spell from 2,000 range. But overall, you know, this it's, it's not right for the meta, I feel. Like, this Void especially, you know, you, you can't play him at any lane other than off lane Sniper. properly. You can get away with him on the safe lane. And Sniper is Dying actually another hero that I'm waiting to see. I think, um... I think the two heroes that I'm really expecting, three heroes, is uh, first and foremost Elder Titan. Not that hero, not Spectre. <laughs> he's good, but he's not that OP. I think Elder Titan, Sniper, and Tuscar have some really, really untapped potential in this patch. I I'm actually just double-checking what they changed to Sniper, because there's a couple of these heroes which are coming into the meta, and I'm sitting there going, I I'm not fully Once understanding wrong. why. So all they changed to Sniper was Headshot now causes a 0.5 second... 100% move speed battle. and attack speed slow instead of the 1.25 second stun. I mean, yeah. I mean the, the 0.25 second stun. And the Which stun effect um, was increased. It's like a stampede target walking over you, basically. With every then, headshot uh, you get. Yeah, that's right. Except, though, it also slows attack speed. Well, so, well, the sniper that's, is like. That's a wonderful way to, to actually chase with this hero more than anything else. Yep. Well, the thing is, the old way actually cancelled TPs. So, it's not like a Bloodseeker treatment where you can just TP out. True. Um. But, I mean, you can still TP out against Sniper, except he has the Assassinate, so if he can connect it fast enough, he can disable the TP, or at least stop the channeling. Is, is it really but, better, though, removing the stun for, for the attack and move slow? Yeah, it is. As a carry function, it definitely is. I have to 100% say. I was doubtful at first, just like how a lot of people were doubtful of PL, but you see some of these abilities, you're just like, whoa, this should not be happening, you know? I'm not sure if you heard, like, some of the pro analysis of Phantom Lancer, and I was on the same fence, like, I thought that hero was going to be terrible. 
I thought it was going to be garbage. She was never going to be used. And then I saw this double walk ability, dodging ravages, walking up over cliffs. And I'm just like, what is going on here? This hero is really a phantom lancer. And man, it is hard to deal with. Speak simply. Speaking of PL, man, let's going to flag it out there right now. Um, PL and Necro. The battle begins. What a combo. Yeah. It's actually a really, really brutal combo to play up against. I'm... I, I, I know we're not going to get the Phantom Lancer in our games right now. Um, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to flag it. Mm -hmm. Elder Titan, man. And Sniper, too. The other, I think there was another change. The Shrapnel AoE. Yeah, it was, it was increased by 50. Yeah. You know, one of the reasons uh, why Sniper used to get picked every game with Crystal Maiden and then completely fell off is because they reduced the Shrapnel AoE by almost half. And now they're slowly bringing it back little by little. Ice Frog saying he wants this hero played. And he's going to get played. This shrapnel does damage. They're coming the in for through. a gank right now, middle. Mystico has actually come up a little bit too far now. The magic missiles can be able to connect, especially with the telekis to set up. And that'll be first blood right now. Smash can't do I anything about this. Then with then with a win run. They got Fade Bolt, oh, they got an they attack. Got Fog was able to keep up enough with it, but then again, Smash got a good Crip Swarm over on way to. And Korok's not too healthy either. Now both have to burn through a lot of consumables, but they do pick up the first blood on, on the support hero in the mid. And that went the way of the Rubik. So yeah. that'll be early boots coming in for for uh, for Fogged. This is somewhat of a tough call, but if Mystico actually ran a little bit more before he triggered the win run, I think he would have been able to get into the fog and stay away from fog's last right click. But that was just a very hard gank to escape, and overall, it was a decent gank. Um, I say decent because it actually gave the favor of the creep wave to Navi US. Normally, three man ganks actually push the wave because the heroes tank the creep aggro and it just hurts the gank overall. But this was decent, and it worked out decently. And I'm saying a whole bunch of decency, but the point is, Shrapnel will be picked up, or should be picked up. Not for you! That's a very decent analysis. Yeah, man, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this, this ability, like, it actually damages the tower through the glyph and through the backdoor protection. It's so, so darn good. It's a shame they don't have anything else to really work with that in this game. Yeah, no Elder Titans today. Yeah, it's... It's just Korok standing alone here in the mid lane up against Smash, and every time Smash wants to crib swarm him. Uh, oh, Smash, look at him! Look what, at his what, attack! Oh, gosh! What, what, why was. Why? 100% minus attack speed, that's why. You actually can't attack. I just thought he was gonna let the crib swarm off, and now he's actually really oh, low! Smash, Korok! Smash. Korok! Oh, Korok! What are you doing, oh, man? He didn't get a proc! He didn't no, get the proc! He needs, to, he needs to make a couple more offerings to the Dota gods, the RNG gods. <laughs> if he if he proc that headshot there though, my goodness, that would have been luck of the century. He he already proc like three shots before that. My goodness, I, I don't know. And also, he's actually maxing pa pa uh, headshot or getting three po two points into it before the take game. At mid lane, you want to get the take game before the headshot. Well, we get to watch that one a little bit closer. Obviously, with the changes, maybe people are prioritizing things a little bit more differently. Like, Kuroko was definitely just looking for his, his proc chance, but that doesn't really change. It's still a 40%. Actually, all you really get is the, is the bonus yeah, damage. Yeah, the extra damage. It's actually not worth it, honestly. Uh. You want the range to be able to just harass from a safe distance more than you want to rely on the headshot doing 25 extra damage. Yes. It's It, it actually doesn't make that much sense to get headshot over take game. It might have been a misclick, honestly. Maybe. There's a smoke movement up towards top lane right now. Fogged as Dyer's well as uh, way too. They're going to try and help out the centaur. Dyer's he's getting really pushed back behind his tower attack. at the moment. It's not the easiest life in the world, but they want to get a pick off on one of the support heroes. Rather difficult on Jakiro. There's a sentry ward around the corner, and now the smoke will break. They realize where oh, they three, are, and three. centaur! Wow. A three-man horn stop in with a four of Fade Bop. They got the spectre dead already. The wave of terror was able to get off too, so there's negative armor over on this Jakiro. So the damage output's going to be really effective here. And into the corner, Masoku's gonna go down. And uh, Mystico is running himself back underneath the tower. In the meantime, two sniper ends up dying by underneath his own tier one tower. That's the second solo kill. All, the, all that's been gathered for them from the first gank has now been lost. Mm -hmm. And I guess the only saving grace is that Navi US will steal the rune from Smash at the top lane. I think the saving but grace is also the patch. bottom lane, man. Check exactly. the bottom lane matchup. This Prophet has been smashed into oblivion. He thought an early oh, null tower would be a really bad. great choice up against a Razor. He's had no movement speed, he's had no ability. Survivability is there because he hasn't died, but he's got no real <laughs> lane presence beyond this. He's finally able to get... Actually, he's farming underneath the towers. So oh, he's struggling yeah, to find any kind of last hits at all under here. 
Yeah, and he's gonna bait snaking. I'm pretty sure they're gonna try to bait snaking into linking and walking up a little bit. Here it is. They're, they're gonna go he's for the still got three points up in that plant field, so Meok to be careful. And then again, smash one more Crib Swarm and they got this kill. Support's coming in there from way too, but it's way too late. <laughs> Well, wow. not was today, not, they say. Tom was not intended, but realized. Yep. It's good. Unexpected awesomeness, Toby. Well done, my friend. Miok's gonna pick up his boots now, and that's gonna help him so much more against the Razor. And most importantly, Spectre manages to scrape up the base boots even after what has happened. This is pretty good, because once again, this hero just needs levels. He catches up with kills from Haunt. And with the new build, with the urn, and the fact that Urn does pure damage, cancelling, cancelling bottling throughs, and all these other stuff like blink daggers, it's so convenient. Again! This time wow. he had help. This time yeah, he had he an Aegis Prophet TPing in. Looks like Fogged also picked up a TP scroll and came from bottom lane to try and help him out, but... That's... That's now the, uh, the third death on this sniper. 75% of the deaths for Navi US, yeah. Korok. And I think, um... I can't... I can't blame him too much for this. I think what happened was just before he died, he realized it and just bought pieces of the Aquila. But I can't help but think that if he ever committed... Oh, never mind. He actually had boots already too. Never mind. That's that's pretty good. I thought he finished an Aquila before he got his boots, and that would have hurt his laning process so much more against the Death Prophet, who has phase boots. He's, he's got both of them, so you, you can you can rest easy, man. Radiance uh, oh, oh, look, back, so, back so in the nice. lanes, though, you've still got uh, snaking, free farming now in the bottom lane. So while they might have got the kill, they did rotate the crop off the lane, so that kind of crippled him a little bit until they obviously came back and killed off Korok. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but you got these moments now up on the top lane where Spectre's not quite sure. The stun will come off. Centaur's trying to get himself in range for the stun, but Fog was way too far back then. He couldn't move up any further because the creep wave would have just spotted him though, and that's the reason why I made the decision. You know, I'm Kor still getting flashbacks of what happened two minutes ago when Kor the centaur actually Kor walked Kor up. Not again, man. Not again. Crib Swarm, the illusions to go for. The Prophet's getting TP in. Crib Swarm off cooldown in one second time, and the Faith Boots are actually giving her the movement speed to catch up. Snaking once again himself a bit of a collateral kill here, but he can't get through the tree line. Smash is already bottling himself up too. Yeah. So that's now the fourth death for Korok here as a sniper in the mid. This sniper, it's it's not working out so far, and honestly, a lot of it I feel is uh, due to a uh, counter snowball effect here. I feel like if you got take game number two, you would have been able to play it safer, not take so much harassment damage from the DP, and possibly created a different opening for a kill opportunity. But with that two points and headshot, he got like the I think the heat got to him, and just he figured maybe with one more proc, but maybe it doesn't doesn't work against not today. Mm -hmm. Right, right now, not today's having the perfect time. Apart from Mystico, who's a little bit too uh, injured. In that mid lane, he's power trying to keep the creep way back and keep his tower alive. The sneaking's adding a lot of pressure while on bottom lane fogged. They're searching for a kill over here on the Death Prophet. The Shrapnel to go onto the corner, pick him up and throw him back into that. But then Spectre, the Haunt will go and look at the life points of Korok, he'll get the assassination kill. And the center only was meant to get him both the way to save you, but the Spectral Dagger will fly into fogged. Minimal slow, it's only level one, but the TP wow. comes in from nice. Mihawk and will take the kill on the hero. In the meantime, too, Wind Ranger was able to deny up that middle lane. Oh, and on that's top so lane, nice. you've actually got a kill over on the Chikiro. The tower got denied by the Ventral Spirit on that lane, but there was still enough damage coming out from the Liquid Fire at the center ended up dying up on the top lane. So 5-8 to eight at the end of that. Would you believe as far as Golden Experience Exchange? Until this bottom tower goes down, it's actually level. And now <laughs> they've actually bought the TPs. There's two of them. Fogged into the tree line. Korok comes in the shrapnel, give him the vision, but Fog too far away to get the telekinesis grab over on the Nature's Prophet before he TP'd out. Hmm. Actually, I think if they had coordinated that, I think Fog might have been able to get the Kinesis off. That was that was interesting. I think uh, Fog wanted to go for uh, the other target. That's, that's, that's an exorcism, man. Yeah, he's not fighting that. Uh, he doesn't want to, but he might have to. Oh. He's going to try and TP in the Fog! Oh, oh, oh. He's out! The dual breath! Dyer's not enough damage on him! He'll survive! Radiance middle tower yeah, that was a close attack. one. He actually wasted a lot of time with that exorcism because they don't get that damage into the T1 tower, which means uh, I, no, they can't deny it, and they, they can't really allow it like, to fight this one. There's no stampede. Four, five seconds on cooldown. Centaur, oh, he centaur. got it! Oh my gosh! I actually think there's only be been stuff. one. Actually, no, I think have every, I think every single tower has actually been denied. Yeah, so far. so far this game, every tower. Actually, the bottom one, bottom one did it get denied? Th that's, that's why I, I have my question mark. The top T1 and the two T1s in the mid. Yeah, yeah, Navi, US, Korok, Sniper denied the tower. I see it. They denied every tower this game. Both <laughs> teams have denied every tower this game. 
<laughs> the amount of gold is probably a creep and a half, maybe two, if you're unlucky. <laughs> Ouch. Every little bit counts, man. Every little bit counts. And that's actually quite a large chunk. Yeah, me. very farm star game overall. Even looking at the CS board, it's not it's not traditional of the safe lane carries that you're expecting out of this. Although for Spectre, this is pretty good. For Razor, it could be better. But Considering regardless. the horrendous starts you could have. Yeah, Razor's able to farm with, with Plasma Field. It can yeah, always yeah. get a little bit more. Uh, Kurok That's wants right. to have a battle on the bottom lane, and Mihawk's going to oblige him. They've walked down way too far. The Shrapnel, Telekinesis could be used here. He let the Wrath of Nature off, but they also Whoa. used this time to reveal the Blink Dagger over from Nestle. Maybe not the yeah. greatest time in the world to do such a thing, but if they can push fast enough, with that Shrapnel up to now four levels from Korok, he actually just just capped that and went 4 2 one, one in his build, they could potentially force out some of these, uh, these towers against NOT. Get a yeah, reaction out from their players instead. This Centaur player, I have to say, he's really good. I, I think he's a... Uh, he, he seems like an experienced player. D do you know who Nestle is? Do you have any background history on Nestle? Yeah, I, I know the individual from matchmaking. I've, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've lost to him more than I've won. You know, he, his stack is a very strong one in the, in the Eastern servers, and it's called the Warden stack, but oh man, it gives me nightmares every time I run into them. But but this player overall, you know, this, this game... He's, he's Stop pretty good. They're gonna jump. Hoof Stomp, Assassinations on the way with a wave of terror. They just assassinate the Spectre on the top lane. And instantly brought this down to the bottom lane. It's alright, oh, there's so many up there. I'm gonna push the bottom lane as quick as I possibly can. So Navi US don't feel enough confidence just to force the top tier one. But we still only have. Man, this Jakiro is so underleveled. He's a level 4 Jakiro. There's only two points of liquid fire. Like if you had three points of liquid fire, I might be a little bit more fearful about this push. Even if you do have exorcism, it's still only a level one. Four points witchcraft to be sure, but it's still only a level one exorcism trying to force into a tier two tower. And they're using Razor Illusions to scout out from behind them. The Plaza Field will mop up most of the life points, the creep wave, and now the other cavalry is on the way here for Navi US. Centaur looking for the hoof stomp kind of opening and now he jumps in. He got it over on the over on the Nature's Prophet, but not on the Death Prophet. The Shackle unable to lash there, but the power shot damage. It went through snaking as well as the Centaur. Korok is at least able to get himself onto a killing spree. Looking for some follow-up. Mihawk, the urn charge. It will tick oh, him out a little bit behind the lines. But we've got a bit of a run right now. Mystico, the quick power shot, the spectral dagger, still on cooldown for Iwo. He'll throw it out eventually into Korok. But it's nowhere near enough damage, and he doesn't have Horn of Valwell to use it to come into the fight. Or at least, yes, he'll use it during the fight. Fortified. So the tier 2 tower will drop at the end of the day. Is he trying it to deny it? Today. He's trying to deny it. <laughs> he got it! An illusion which does piss all damage! And we keep the trend going. Every single tower on the map has been denied this game. Three heroes, one illusion. Oh boy, oh dear. Goodness gracious, Toby. What is going on? That, that shouldn't have happened. That, that's, that's, that's laziness right there. Oh man, that reminds me of something else that's somewhat embarrassing for like, uh, like Cloud9 sometimes when, when we try to sneak in Roches, we don't have somebody that's dedicated to grab the Aegis right away because Eternal Envy always tries to like give it to other people kind of thing. He's not very greedy on himself. Like, oh, he's oh. a very greedy player. But. Spectre, real trouble. Talkies just pick up and throw Dyer's down. The Spectral Dagger went through him too. There was no way out of that one. Even if he had a hero to haunt to, it wouldn't have saved him. He wouldn't have wanted to blow the haunt for just a simple pick up throw down. But that was the two supports. Dual killing, like, dual killing, I suppose it's all the killing. Uh, the number one position of NOT. Yeah, that, that, that's a dual kill right there. Indeed, indeed. Can we, but. is that even a term? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a dual, dual kill? Queue? Yeah, it is, man. Okay. You don't solo queue, you dual queue. I, I I understand, like, like practically it does work, but it's, it's not even being used by anybody. Ah, two-man queue, whatever, same thing. But overall, you know, it's it's just one of those things, you know, at that bottom lane, everybody was kind of trying to give each other the, the benefit, saying, hey, no, it's yours, you take it, you take it, and boom. Get snatched right out of your hands, just like the Aegis. Ah... Uh... Every Fla single flashbacks tower to Fnatic nine. games. Flashbacks yeah. to Fnatic games. <laughs> Those damn Lycan balls. Lest oh, we yeah. forget. Yep. They're going in for Roshan now in OT. They smoke up Mihawk, TP'd himself in, and Spectre just dagging himself inside the pit. So even if they did have a ward, which Navi US don't, uh, they would never have seen them go into the pit. And Roshan, man, love that attack speed. Mm -hmm. 
Speaking of attack speed, it's not too relevant, but you know, I, I really don't like it when Death Prophets go this drums. I don't, uh, I don't particularly think that uh, in terms of item wise, like it synergizes with the hero because it gives you movement speed and stats and a little bit of damage, but it's just so unnecessary. It's like it's like one of those things like these. Uh, okay, I think Draw Rangers, for example, picking like triple up triple rate bands instead of just going to Yasha or Shadow Feet picking rate bands and stuff. It just hinders your next item progression, and and the point of your vulnerability lies not in the early game, but in the mid game from from 10 to 15 minutes when you die because you don't get EXP easily afterwards. So this drums, I think it just hinders a Yule's pick up, honestly. Yule's gives 40 movement speed, it's so much better overall. I had a discussion about this with Pandago, actually. Um, n not about the drums exactly, but going for a high amount of Wraith Bands or going for early items. Like, things like a Ring of Aquila, which is just really good money for that, like, value for, for money. Yeah. And you have these early game items, and you use them if you think you really, really need them early on. Just because yeah. the way the meta has changed, you... You, you need this extra stuff at, at the start, so you're like, well, okay, I, I will actually spend the money, because I know it's going to be useful for me. And you only pick it, though, if you believe you can get enough of a return off picking up the item. Yeah, that's right. To justify Spirian the really good, for example. Because Spirion has item transitions, he ultimates to get his farm back, and this Null Talisman build actually lets him get kills better, and it also helps him farm the jungle, because he's just a pure right-clicker at times. Um, something like, for example, what the, the I think it was... Who's he having on? a crack at? Looks like VS was the one up on top lane taking some damage. Ends up just being a Vision thing attack. only. Yeah, so the Haste Rune does get acquired from Smash, and Vision has been acquired as well. But just going back to that point, it's if you don't have a transition, or if you think you have a transition but you die, it hurts so, so much. And I think, um, like what Mihawk did, not Mihawk, Mystico, I think he was the one that picked up the double, double talisman last game. On Windrunner or the game or the game before that, it's it's not healthy, honestly. It really hinders item progression. And nice Snake shackle. gets a nice shackle on. Him. Where's that ice bath? Yeah, what? It, he he cancels animation for it, and now the support's gonna roll in here. Mihawk, he'll trigger off his blade melt, and they lock Snaking inside that sprout to swap away. However, the liquid fire, they're trying to actually counter the urn effect on him and bottle charging. He's gonna survive on low life points, but he'll TP out. The Agassi model got burnt out by this by uh, by Spectre. And now they're actually chasing it a little bit further. The uh, dagger was up to pick off Korok, but the rest of Navi US, they're escaping. The Prophet going to TP in. Searching for Fogdor, she jukes him around inside the tree line. He stole the Crypt Swarm as well. Fable still available. He's got Crypt Swarm and Fable up. Uh, a little bit further away, the Pink Panda, Mr. Mr. Uh, Waitu, is on the run from Smash. The Yule Scepter being used. He got his stun off in time, but there's just not enough damage. He wave of terrorists to throw it down into the Spectre. The urn charge, it gave him enough heal to stay alive. And I went to retreat out of here. Smash will TP out too. And Korok, the assassination, he's got him. It's in the bag. The Spectre will go down. NOT chase so deep, but little to no reward. In fact, they lost the reward. They gave money to their captors. Yeah, I think you summarized the team pretty well there. But one thing I learned just now is that the bottle. I thought the urn would cancel the bottle. I I can't remember the exact numbers of the the damage required per second or the DOT required to cancel the bottle. I know salve is 20 damage or something like that. Snaky. But He's in trouble. They're gonna sprout him up again and again there's no way for him to get out of this sprout. They keep him silenced. The ice path. It's a rather tanky kind of guy triggering his drum charges but I'm sorry oh snaking God. even with your extra bottle that you were not getting away to safety. Mm -hmm. Actually, was that did he even have a bottle charge then? He kind of almost like Smash gave him one. <laughs> <laughs> I've been generous of him, but you know, uh, regardless, actually, is one that or even two possible? Can you actually give him. a bottle charge to your enemy? There was that case at International that I think might have had a an outcome Radiant's difference when it comes to when it comes to the match. EG versus DK when Artizi's Tinker bottled the Juggernaut, which didn't have mana for it, the Omni Slash. Uh huh. Yeah, it was like when you click the target with a laser or something like that, you can accidentally bottle the target too, or some Radiant weird bug like that, but we don't have to worry about it anymore. Oh, that shrapnel's really good and deep. Smash and Mihawk, so they're, nice. ha they're having trouble staying there. And then also the stuns, look at the slow. Masoku lo losing all of his speed right now. They'll actually trigger the ult and off with the Spectre. Oh, Korok, Spectre. he's the man that gets caught out, however. It's just pure chaos when she triggers that. Yeah. The... Spectre is pretty much the hardest direct counter to Sniper in the game. It's a hero that wants to tank, and Sniper is a hero that wants to hit. Most importantly, Spectre is the definition of a gap closer. He teleports right on top of your hero anytime he has Haunt available. And Sniper 
cannot have that happen because this hero has to be built as a glass cannon. But he doesn't have the elusive abilities like an Ember Spirit does, nor does he have a Flame Shield. He simply has his right clicks and his positioning. And his positioning is just ripped apart away from him from a Spectral Haunt. Right now, man, we're sitting in 15-11. We, you know, I, I don't know about you, but with this game the way it is right now, I've actually stopped bringing up the net worth graphs. <laughs> it's. I mean, I'm, I'm just so content about the tower denies and everything else. I'm. Yeah. I'm pretty sure not today will win though. They they have a strong draft, a very very strong one. And it, as as the game progresses, I don't see Navi US being able to fight the Spectre with their lineup. Not only the Spectre you have to worry about, but this Death Prophet hero. You leave her untouched in the team fights. That exorcism will tear you apart. So. You're actually seeing Rubik's answer to that. It's like crap. I got one point up in null field, and I get two braces. Crack closer yeah, to a thousand yeah, life points as opposed to just going straight for the arcane breeze, which he kind of needs during these fights. Because he needs <laughs> I, he needs the ability to spam a lot more. Especially when he's able to pick up things like Crypt Swarm. Then with Crypt Swarm and Fable, you can just keep doing the counter push for your team in combination with Shrapnel and Plasma Field. Then NOT yeah. have a real that's, that's the only reason why I don't think I don't, I can't give the win to NOT right now. It's because the ability to to hold the line for an RBUS is really good and their late game potential. While it may not be as great as a Spectre as well as a Crop, if they do get lucky or through skill, they able to bring down these heroes and a Razor has an Aghanim Scepter, they're going to beat the living crap out of everyone. And look at Korok's answer to the Spectre. Pick up a Shadow yeah. Blade. This is the only That's way nice so, he can, so he can hunt and run. And now he's going to instantly scatter out with this. The Spectre Haunts, they oh, trigger Dust, the Shackles won't be able to latch, but he's got the movement speed. He gets sent up in towards the air, the Mask of Madness is there, and well, I'm sorry. That uh, didn't really go to the work he hoped for. And Mihawk, he's been picked up and thrown back down again, allowing Sneaking to get himself a good long static link over from Mihawk. And Krop gonna trigger oh, the ultimate. They the want problems. the kill VS. I don't think enough life points for that, especially when the Shackle's capable of latching. But they have managed to blow the Exorcism for a kill on a VS. So it will be a two for one trade off. But NOT's push kind of stops here. Yeah. I, I don't see too much happening for Navi US, especially if they fight outside base. As you said, their base defense is. Pretty good. With the Shrapnel, they can hold out the waves, and with the Wave of Terror doing pure damage, uh, and Seattle all? bump for things, but... Th this is not where you want to be, on. man. Like, he's gonna four stuff and then try and TP out. The Shackle, if he didn't four stuff then, then uh, that four star, uh, the four star from the Wind Ranger would have got him in range in time for the Shackle to cancel the TP. Hmm. Reminds me a lot of uh, what Koipa would do with Centaur in that situation. When his team is just getting dominated and, uh, and he doesn't have Stampede available. It's like, like Cloud9, Tink Team Tinker type of players, they would skip the creep wave and just, just push it out. So they would force TPs and make space. Look at the ability Fog managed to pick up. He actually somehow, which really baffles me how he's managed to get this, uh, he picked up Teleportation. Now normally with Nature's Prophet, you TP in, and if you're coming from Fountain, you're going to TP in and summon your tree straight away. So they make the most out of your mana pool. Yeah. Uh, but in this case, or at least throw something. Uh, but in this case... He mustn't have done that, or Fog got him the second he arrived. And now Fog was actually TPing out, uh, he TPed out the top lane using teleportation. Mm -hmm. And he's he's becoming the split pusher. Sure it's only a fade bolt for their, for their push power, yeah. but it's still bringing him into the creep waves all across the map. And he'll have this nice for, it's, it's a level 1 steal, it's not that great. Uh, but still, it's letting him do his job. Two fade bolts and the creep waves are gone. Yeah, I think he should really look into securing that bottom room. As I say that, I don't think NOT seem to contest it. They don't have vision on it. But that haste rune's been sitting there for some time now. I I figured that somebody really wants it. And here it is, Snaking getting that haste rune. That's going to help him so much in that next team fight because he'll not only have that, but he'll have his BKB, which is coming on the courier. You pop a BKB with a haste rune on a razor with yeah. ultimate, <laughs> it does work. Yeah, you, you're, bas you're basically uh, good to go to Radiant's win everything then. But the Eye of the Storm will wear off for the moment. So yeah. you'll have to wait another 38 seconds. We just want to force the tower down instead. With the shrapnel. Look how deep it is. Dude, I'm telling you, that spell is actually so amazing. It's, it's, it's actually on the it tower. Damages. It's not on the tower. The tower, is. Is, the tower is ticking, but it doesn't have any kind of like indication on the Indicator. tower. Indicator. Right, right, right. You just have to know, and you just have to edge it on the AoE. Like, That's... even if it's just outside the AoE, it'll still hit. Most importantly, the fact that it gives vision and you can cast it from like 2,000 some range away, and uh, 
Well, I'm gonna have to hold that thought. It looks like the NLT want to engage and invade into the enemy jungle here. And they're coming really close. The smoke's gonna break the shackle and tries to go. Nestle, he oh, will get shackled and they'll isolate him a long way down, which means there's no stampede. A little bit further over, Meorg's being picked up and thrown down by Fog. He'll break the tree line and Fog. Well, he's not getting out of this one. At least he might be able to. Meorg's trying to keep up with him. Not enough movement speed. While Way2 will die, the rest of NOT. Fog's on any life points will survive. <laughs> the Wind Rangers try and catch up to him. Four staff. Oh, he got the own charge! He's gonna no one charge us. He's dead. Fog will die. Three life points just short of the well. And the NOT will now breach high ground. They got the opening they wanted to. Snaking's doing the best he can to defend in the plasma field. The fortification's already been used, and that exorcism is just ripping through the buildings, not to mention with the help with the support of the liquid fire. They send the Rubik up and towards the area. Stole Ice Path will return to four heroes with the plasma field oh. and the static link now into the Spectre. They still haven't got what they came for, which is the Rax, but they have to retreat. The center ulti snaking as well, running himself in. How much damage can you steal a hell of a lot, especially when you're able to get that ice path off again? Oh, the Spectre! The assassination, the assassination caught, caught him out! Smash got his life points back from the Exorcism, so they can't bring him down, but NOT just lost three heroes. They didn't take the racks, and they gave 5.1k experience over during that fight, lost almost 1,200 gold, and gave over 1,850. Yeah, this is, this is the comeback that they were looking for right here. I'm still not too convinced or sold. I think entirely because of the fact that Spectre casted Haunt to begin the fight at the bottom lane, forced the mid-engagement to not go as well as NOT, NOT had hoped, but they can very well choose the next fight with the Spectre initiation and the and the Exorcism coming out of the Death Prophet, so wouldn't count, I wouldn't count them out by any means, but again, this Sniper, he is getting bigger, so it is something that they have to worry about. Yeah. Now this Mid-Tip has, mid has a second tower. They're gonna back up from it, Smash. He's got this Yule Scepter available on him, so he wants to have a crack, especially with the support of the half. But then Hofstall oh, catches nice out too. The Static Link from Sneaking. He's going to pull up a lot of damage here. Smash up and towards the air, but the Static Link is still remaining with the plants of field damage. One hit, two hits into Masoko. Sneaking wants to stand his ground. He's losing his teammates pretty quickly as he battles through the Magra Pyre. Turns on his BKB. The physical DPS not enough. He's waiting for a power shot jump. Nestle is here. Masoko, he wants it. The center will be used. Spectre with no haunt available is still on cooldown for the moment. He'll get the dagger over onto Nessel, but Nessel will quickly TP himself out and the Shackle can't get in range in time. So it'll end up being a 3-for-3 three three trade-off after that fight. Yeah, that was a really, really close call. If Snaking had died there, NOT would have been in really good shape because the, as soon as the Death Prophet comes back, they could go straight into the Roche Pit. But as it stands now, Snaking is still alive and his BK Bull will be available for the next engagement. On top of that, he has picked up an Ogre Club, so it leads me to believe his next items will be the Aghanim Scepter. Which he actually has be. it. He's got the other two 1k oh, items he, it's over on the Oh, Yeah, he's got the whole shebang, man. Toby, they might stage the comeback after that kind of a fight. They really might. This is this is really, really good news for Navi US. All of a sudden, you don't have to just focus and and the uh, tunnel vision on the Spectre. They I mean, have tunnel trouble. vision on the Sniper. But you, you see what NRT are doing right now. They're taking they're yeah. taking the second Roshan. Like you want to take a fight up against these guys while they have Aegis the Immortal? Do they do they no. really have enough stability to do that up against NRT? Not against the Spectre at this point. Definitely not. This this Radiant Spectre is ripping most of their heroes to shreds. Even their core, the Sniper, arguably their one position hero at this point. Although it's probably the Razor. It's it's just not strong enough to fight up against even Spectre Illusion Haunts. Not to, not to, that's, that's not withstanding the Spectre ability to jump into the Haunt and cast a Spectral Dagger and just chase him down by tunnel visioning him. Which is what happened last fight. Yep. So they've got a lot of problems, but they have solutions and they've demonstrated to us with these 18 kills that they can take some of these fights if they, if they play it well. Of course, it does require NLT to either overextend or, I don't know, mistime a couple of spells, but it is possible. Well, I don't see making their way down the middle lane right now. The Exorcism yeah. is off cooldown. It's a level 16 Death Prophet with Heart and Yule Scepter. So a lot of survivability on her. And Shakira is also cracked level level 11. So it's a 2 point up in Macro Pyre. They gotta be careful. These kind of pushes. All snaking. Like, is there anything to shackle yeah. him to? There's a nice path. Uh, just harassment. Mm. I think it's fine. I don't think Mystico wants to give himself the damage from the unstable current. But like these kind of pushes. It's really, really nice to have an Observer Ward on the enemy hill because of this kind of thing. Like, you can't really get ambushed and smoke aggressed on when you see the enemy base. Because if all the heroes are missing, it's very obvious that they're either smoking or sitting way far back. Yeah. And, I mean, NOT are reacting perfectly, but I'm not even sure if they realize it. 
Um, I think they <laughs> this just, is just they really just, good they just fell back if they felt they couldn't go high ground. Yeah, 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 that's right. Look at Mihawk now. He might actually get killed here. Oh, well, there's your Sprout. Centaur jumps up. And he will, even with the Blade Mill up, just go straight in for that attack with the double edge. Yeah, you... Honestly, if they had a ward in the enemy enemy uh, hill here, where the, where the tower is dead, yep. they would be able to realize that all the hills have been missing for like 30-40 seconds, and the smoke aggression was quite obvious. And now that's going to push middle lane, Navi. They know Nature's Prophet is down, oh, and then they expect a horn. He runs up, Mystico got picked up and thrown back down again. Fogs will go down in this fight. And then again, so will the Rubik. Nestles follows him straight after. The buyback came out from Nature's Prophet. They only get the Aegis more. The Assassination's coming over towards the Wind Ranger, but on 43 life points, she'll survive snaking. That actually mans up. He's got so much damage, 196 points of stolen damage. We'll give him a double kill. Korok is actually dropping himself away from this, able to TP out oh. only barely in the nick of time. They're sneaking on the run. That Spectre moving as quickly as she possibly can. A bounty room will give some bottle charges over to sneaking, which is much needed for him. Which means he can probably even, I'm not gonna say turn and fight, uh, but he can definitely survive the chase. Oh, what Mihawk would do for a buyback right now. <laughs> what a... Yeah. Man, yeah, he could have just he, uh, sprouted back in. He, he bought back during that engagement. I think that was enough for him. Oh, remember, did he? Yeah, remember. I didn't realize he died twice. <laughs> re remember, he, he was the initial pickoff. He was the reason why Navi US oh, were pushing to the right, tier 2 right, tower. right, right, right. right, right. <laughs> Oh, so you actually, oh, yeah, I did see the Fury NLT coming in. I was just like, yeah. well, this is a really good position for Navi. US. I mean, really good position for an NLT to engage from Upper Hill. <laughs> DP already got his ultimate animation off, so everything was going swell. And all of a sudden, Snaking coming out with 200 damage stolen. And that light show coming out of that Eye of the Storm. They're just not controlling armor. Snaking. Like, he's, he's walking around quite freely inside these fights. They oh. can't control him. That was BKB. Yeah. It's... Well, the, the only other way you're going to be able to do it is if you've got a Hex. Like, you need to Scythe the Vice. Yeah, that's right. And this Fearin actually went for, like, the worst item to build at this point, I think. Well, it went for Orchid. Why would you go an Orchid? Yeah, it's 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 the worst choice right now because everybody already either has BKBs or the ones that don't, you can kill without an Orchid anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's better to just go raw damage or a BKB for himself with the Blade Mail, ironically. And, and I guess, I mean, of course, the best choice would be Sheepstick. But... He did go for the Orchid, and that's uh, I think that's a pretty hefty price for 4k gold at this point in the game. He's he's lost a lot out of that, not to mention the buybacks. Do, do you uh, see the irony in the fact that uh, Korok Shrapnel doesn't pierce spell immunity, but it will pierce buildings? Pardon me? Like, j just the sniper. Like, he walked over right then, he, he attacked off the Ancients, and he threw down his Shrapnel. And obviously yep. it does no damage to the Ancients, but I just find it really amusing. It does no damage to Ancients, yet somehow it can pierce the structures of NOT. The Ancients being yeah, stronger yeah, yeah. than right. that. Well, it does reduce damage to buildings. It's it's specific. It's just like a Pugna Blast. Oh, Korok. Whoa! Shadow Blade. The dust will come, but he's into the tree line. The Sprout needs to go over in the trees. Oh, they saw him. They pick him up, they throw him down. The Ice Path will catch him. It's yeah. still a heavy commitment to bring down a Dwarven Sniper. Uh, then again, though, their lanes are pushed in. And they got the objective they're looking for because he's one of the most important targets aside from the Razor. So it's it's okay to have that kind of commitment. Like, once again, NLT, they can keep doing this to a Sniper so long as, one, he doesn't buy BKB, and two, he doesn't buy Force Staff. And Force Staff has not been viable on Sniper ever since the Force Staff changes. It used to give damage, which was perfect on Sniper, but now it doesn't. And looks Look like they snaking. just want to walk up. No, Snaking's man-moding it too. Yeah, uh, he wants oh, them now. back, and he wants them back now. But the yeah. buyback did come, and Snaking's already triggered his ultimate. I don't, I don't really think that was essential from Korok. Though we're gonna lose that tier 2 tower anyway Radiant's up on the top, top lane. Tower has fallen. But it's like, when Snaking initiated, Korok thought the whole team was going in. Which didn't have to happen. That was just Snaking posturing. But with the buyback, NOT did fall back anyway. And let's go back to the split push. Mihawk's just keeping the, the uh, side lanes pushed out. I'm still waiting for the day that Fog's able to pick up well, something. <laughs> he's, I think he's trying to get himself to a blink dagger so he can be there jumping initiation right next to Nestle. He was actually pretty damn close to finish up his BKB. He's only just a couple of thousand, oh, a couple of thousand, <laughs> just over a thousand gold away. <laughs> uh, Wind Ranger? The Observer Ward, I think, saw him come into the jungle, but beyond that, it didn't see anything else. Nothing beyond the summit. 
I don't have too much to add right now, man. It's it's just that that point in time where people are waiting for ultimates to come off. Everybody's scared. Nobody wants to go into the fog. And mm. nice use of shrapnel here, trying to deny that ward. And sniper of all heroes can actually get it because of taking. But again, in the team fights, 950 range or a billion range doesn't matter when when the enemy hero is right on top of you in the form of a specter. Yeah. Oh man, it's uh, it's a nice day for snaking. He's now got his uh his uh, soul cure ass up and running. So the team fights for Navi US are getting a little bit better and better as time goes on. Because they've still got their aura buff up for the damage which comes out from the VS if she can live. And obviously then it's naked effect, negative effect if she does die. And on top of that, so you don't win the physical DPS. And then you can drain physical DPS out of one here and make him completely useless during the engagement as well. And now, uh, yeah, more push powder come on the bottom. And it's going to be sneaky looking towards that tier 2 tower. It's the last remaining out of tower for both these sides. Only one team has, has a bigger advantage, and that's NOT brought down that tier 3 tower in the mid. But are they actually looking to go in? This group up right now looks more like a smoke gank than anything else. But no, not a single player for Navi US currently is, is walking around with smoke. Does, do they even have smoke? Where is it? They got one in stock. And Jakiro, in fact, now will buy a smoke of his own. Hey, Dolby, what's up, man? <laughs> you still having a great time there, Claire? <laughs> oh, I'm doing a little bit of the chat craft myself here for a bit. But yeah, looks like uh, Snaking has picked up the next item. I'm not sure if you touched upon it already. The AC? Yeah, yeah the AC. It's, okay. it's, it's, all about, it's all about his team fight. That's what he was searching yeah. for. I think, uh, I mean, honestly, this game, I'm not even sure if he really wants AC. I feel like Refresher would just be straight up better. But it's not a bad item in any case scenario, so I can't really... You can't really uh, harp down on that. Or clamp down on that, rather. We have Centaur's a, we have a Scotty. We have a Scotty coming in. Uh, oh, on who? Not fully yet for Korok, though. He's actually picked up... He's sacrificing his buyback for this. Is this because he's on cooldown? Yeah, it's, yeah, on, it's cool on cooldown. Down. So That's he right. just spends the money for it anyway. Yep. But he's not all the way from having a Scotty on a sniper. Which, oh, considering you, know you removed the stun, wouldn't it have been better to go to something more along the lines of a Monkey King bar? Well, you've already got your slow. Your attack speed actually, slow and your move slow. This is the interesting thing. Sniper, which is known to not be a good farmer, uh, has traditionally had the best synergy with MKB as a right-clicking item, even with the headshot doing the stun. Yep. Right now, with the slow, it's actually even better. And it's it's definitely the, the best hitting item, because it gives him the attack speed as well as a huge amount of right -click. Real, real trouble for him on the bottom lane. They're going to isolate it. Even the Shackle! They tried to swap him away from this, and then the mech charge! I think Way Too Sexy may have just saved this game for his team. They four-staff him out. NOT came on top of Snaking when it's a ton of bricks, but the Vengeful Spirit nimbly swaps out his teammate. So the Shackle unit too far away, and NOT, it's like they tunneled to make sure that, like, Razor was the important one. They didn't give a crap about VS. They didn't want VS. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they got neither. That's honestly kind of odd to me. I feel like that kill should have been guaranteed if they had positioned a little bit better. But... I do have to also give it to Navi US because they realized that NLT wouldn't have enough damage right away with Exorcism. NLT's damage comes from team fights and extended team fights because they have such good sustained DPS, not not so much on the burst department, and their disables are certainly lacking because of the Spherian's item choices, which are reverting back to the old, which is the Sheepstick probably from that ultimate orb. So mm -hmm. I think things are going to go better for them, and I think the most important thing in the next team fight with the Haunt will be that Spectre has Manta. And we'll have to see if he gets the heart or if he completes a Diffusal Blade. I think Diffusal Blade is actually the right goal here. If they can get Spectre. Spectre doesn't know about this gank. And Korok's on his way up right now. Centaur, oh, there's your Shrapnel them. Vision. The Horb Stomp. And they got him. There's no Haunt. There's no way out of here. There's no way home at all. They've got the Spectre down. The same time Roshan was being started on. So NOT. No, they can. they, they, they can't they can contest this. Roshan. No, I don't think they can kill it though, because if they kill it, for them to kill it, it's either going to take like an entire minute, or they're going to have to commit exorcism to take it down fast. And I, I don't know if it's going to be an entire minute, man. That, you know, there's really there's a lot of I damage thought... coming out from this lineup with the focus fire up at level two, the liquid fire is slowing down Roshan as well, and the basic attack damage coming out from a prop is still extending over 200. There's still stampede though. This is kind of what I was fearing. I, I wonder if they're going to oh, go past the field. Right? They're coming in, snaking triggers the BKB. Mazoku forced back inside, and in comes Centaur. Hope Stomp, he's going to catch out the uh, 
the Jakira inside the pit. They have the buyback over on the Spectre, on the Spectre, and they've already brought down two heroes. Snaking the Shackle will fly up. He's low on life. He does go down, giving a double kill over towards the Spectre. But they back up, and they're still ending up being a well, a buyback and a two for two trade off. The advantage mm -hmm. is actually pretty well split. The gold change doesn't change that much, and the experience change is actually quite even. It's just who's yep. left alive, and Mihawk, why? That's that's pretty aggressive. Fog, he's getting some help. They're still actually Fable. They can get the kill. They get the Aegis Immortal burnt down. Fog, he's all good up, and he'll pop from that one. So the Aegis will be triggered as well here. But you've already got the Spectre trying to breach for the high ground. The buybacks being available. You've got Centaur, Razor, as well as the Rubik, all having buybacks right now. But there's no way Razor wants to be using his unless the Rax will come under peril. And yeah, he not, has to. He has to. There it is. He's coming out for the Spectre. She'll run herself away while a middle lane. Mihawk, not as lucky. He burnt the Aegis before. The Orca goes over on Fox. There's no control from him. And, well, nice. we questioned nice. the item, but it seems to have saved his life just there. Oh, to be fair, Sheepstick might have changed the outcome. The <laughs> it entirely, would have been exactly earlier. the same kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, he's got a Sheepstick now, and there's a Dagon picked up by Mystico, which I. It's light. I mean. It's really I light. Mean, okay, okay, it was, it was yes, Mystico. He sold it. He sold it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know about a Dagon here. I think he could just... He's in such a good position as a support windrunner because 40 minutes into the game, even he's getting farmed. And all you want to do is just add on more disables because your Spectre and Death Prophet can do all the damage in the world. So, I think it's a good choice. Dagon, however, not a good choice. No bueno. Should flag the fact, too, that the cheese was never used during the last fight. It got put on the Courier uh, and now is in the hands of the Spectre. Yeah, that's super nice. But I'm still curious what the Spectre is going to get next. Uh, I really feel like he could just... Snaking, triggering the ultimate. Oh, that Orchid's no. already gone over from the VS. The main charge trying to keep him up. But Snaking just BKBs and TPs out. The Heal Scepter. <laughs> and... <laughs> I got a funny feeling Smash thought maybe the BKB would wear off by that point. Yeah, so he, he tapped it. Yeah, he clicked it on him and then the double click <laughs> happened. Uh, that was pretty funny. But yeah, it, it wasn't it wasn't bad at all. Was, he did the right thing. Oh, they're moving quick. They're moving Korok. really quick. Korok. He's too far out. The Spectre's going to hold. Look at the Death Slate attack into him too. It's just because they got him game. isolated. The, and now they found another one. He reality to the bottom lane. Oh, that's And he actually steal. stole. He stole the reality. Where'd he jump to? He jumped oh, to the God. other guys up in the mid. And there's three heroes there, Fox. One quick bait ball. And I think with this, NOT have enough of a ticket. If only they had the creep wave. They don't have it on the bottom. They don't have it on the mid. I, I don't oh, wow, think they. Right. Can they actually even capitalize on this? Like, you can uh, drop, sure dr you can drop the dust lane. there. And yeah, you go. Yeah, it'll it'll take some time, but I, that's that's a very nice point to point out here. I didn't realize that their lanes were all so far pushed out, even with the Furion having ultimate available and dropping it just just as the kills happen. But they'll be able to push high ground here and glitch my thing. No, the buyback. The shackle. They try and use the sprat to do it. The VS swapping actually out the Spectre illusion of all things. While Nestle moving in closer, they get the kill over on the wind range with that plants of sneaking, starting to steal out this damage. How much can he grab, however? Only 84 points at this game. And then Iwo back up to the high ground, trying to isolate the heroes way too. He's the most isolated of them all, and that's the one the Spectre will focus on. While Nessa was still battling around here, they'll have the sniper up in four seconds time, but the range ranks and the melee will both go down here. But the TP is already on the way from the Razor. Plants of Field being used to mop up the creep wave from Masoku, being picked up and thrown back down again. As Korok trying to catch up, they actually forced up into the hoof stomp. Miyok will die here, double edge, probably not essentially to be used there. The assassination's on the way in, it's not enough damage to kill off a Spectre. But they are, are able to get a couple of pick offs. Kind of felt like a little bit like Centaur gave his life away where it didn't have to go down then. Yeah, but yeah. NOT could have been a, a lot worse for Navi US then. Yep, I think so as well. I think uh, NOT came out overall ahead in that exchange. Even though they lost an extra hero, they got the Raxus. But most importantly, the map control to follow is that Spectre is going to have Aunt available very soon because that engagement just now was all due to the fact that he was able to get kills from the Haunt over two minutes ago, or just around two minutes ago. So his Haunt is available again, which means this Sniper, who's still on his way to a Scotty, will either not be forced to not finish it because he needs to save for buyback, or finish it and still face the same danger. He's still gonna fall the exact same way. Spectre's gonna jump on him, he's just gonna get tunnel vision. And of course, if the Fury and TPing in with a Sheepstick doesn't help either. That's, so That's why I don't understand overall. this this Sniper build. I to actually get something like a Scardi. Because with the money which he had, he could be picking up a Demon Edge and having his advantage already. And then we'll still be able to have his buyback at this point of the game. And when you're ready and when you got enough money, you don't. I don't suppose you, have, you don't have to venture out of the base anyway. He, he's got to complete his item. He's he's taken the gamble. He has to complete his item. There's no other choice for him. Yeah. 
I think that's the right call at this point too. They lose one more team fight, this game's pretty much over. Yeah. Uh, also, the other thing is, in terms of item choices, I think I, I can kind of agree, but I'm not too sure how much it would even matter, honestly. Like, I feel like uh, MKB, it is, it is definitely the better choice in terms of damage, and Scotty's not gonna really save him. What Scotty's gonna do is, it's gonna help him clean up better if they try to focus the Razor and somehow the Razor doesn't die, which, which oh, seems to be the story lane, of this game. Smash, isolated smash. fog with a Crib Swamp. That will be the uh, the Horn Tin. And they're waiting for Fog to come back down again. They will get the kill on him while a double shackle catching out Way2 as well as Nestle. Four stop up for one. Way2 has to walk in the old fashioned way. But that Scardi is fully done right now. And they're going to jump nice. Mihawk. The damage into Nature's Prophet did very, very quickly. That swap coming out from Way2, giving him the initiation they're searching for. And Korok actually able to get rid of these Mana Style Illusions of Spectre, taking a while to do so. But the Crobaldi will be triggered on bottom lane. Same with Sneaking's BKB and Ultimate as well. But he's also insanely close to having his uh, his refresher orb up and running. But the Yule oh, Scepter, they ice path him, snaking, trouble. He does have buyback, the macro pipe, burning through his life points. He's got no choice but apart from the dying, apart from Nestle, who was able to get himself a good orb stomp off, buying some space. But then VS shackled to the tree line. They have to buy back right now, but the only one available is Sniper. Battling from inside his own base, the assassination. He's actually slowing down Smash pretty nicely. But the bottom ranks will be, will be uh, lost here. A sniper can't defend this alone. Fog is coming up. Nestle's gonna wait for the jump point. The shrapnel to come down as well. Korok. Assassination. Oh, actually nice. sliced up the Chikiro. But the Yule Scepter into Korok. He'll go in this. Backs up. Now he's gonna help out the rest of his teammates. Masoku. Masoku. Low on life. And now she bring him down right now. In fact, Fog able to come out a long way with that Spectral Dagger. Slowing down the Spectre. Now also with that extra shrapnel attack. They keep their range ranks in the bottom lane. They force NOT back. And now the US are not out of this yet. They got a, a very big advantage. That was 7.6k experience in that fight. Not to mention the 2.8k they got and the 1.7k they took away from NRT. <laughs> Certainly a nice move there. Uh, they're gonna try to push out the mid wave now and of course the creeps are superior on the side of NLT with the Raxes in, in their favor. But overall their, their map control is just... It's just so, it's been so simmered down, like it's, it's way too well controlled by NOT right now. Even with their heroes down, Navi US realized that they can't really push in because they fear one, which is a buyback engagement, and two, just the potential of overstaying and overcommitting, which would maybe get them a tower, but then get themselves subsequently team wiped and probably lose the game right off the bat. So they have to continue relying on these big plays coming out of the BS to save targets or pick off a really, really nice initiation. Fog continually making the plays and stealing the right spells. Centaur with all the stampede and initiation abilities and of course sniper sitting at the back lines Hopefully not getting zoned out by the specters haunt alone It's just a really really difficult game for them to come back properly yeah. Well, the Centaur's trying to do something about this. He's managed to finish up his heart now Yep, so it's pretty big. That'll, that'll give some life points for him. I'm wondering too what Korok's gonna be, gonna, gonna be doing with his 3.5k Because his damage output really seems to still be rather negligible I'm still waiting for the Monkey King bar to arrive for him but that yeah. means he's going to be, be dropping BKB, something. BKB might not be a bad choice this game. Like yeah. He might actually need one to fight properly. And it's it's always not the best for a sniper to build BKB, but given the way the hero is played right now with Shrapnel and depending on the mid lane, like mech BKB, these kind of things, like people are recently playing all around a lot with the Shadow Fiend mech, especially <laughs> in the Chinese scene. I I'm telling you, this mech sniper, it's, it's viable. Kurok says, it's screw that. Good. Right now he's stacking every orb effect under the sun. Oh gosh, he got a Maelstrom. That, that a... Maelstrom item is like a first item, it's not, yeah. not a fifth he, item. He, he must just be looking for a Mjolnir. And it may be uh, also to put onto the back of the Centaur when he jumps in. It's also a, a nice. nice bit of counter push, but then again, you need direct damage to get into that Spectre anyway. That Spectre's getting tankier and tankier as time goes on. Well, the thing with Mjolnir is, if you've seen what Mjolnir does to Exorcism, it's quite interesting. What's it do? I mean, it's the you have a razor. Oh, it's already having a light show of his own. Who's probably who's got a refresher orb now? So add add on to that, and you have a Mjolnir that's procking off the potential of every single exorcism tick. True. And what you got is just magic show all around. Rave party every night. Disco, 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 <laughs> disco, disco, Toby. They're coming up. Of course. Smashes Smash. the invis rune, and oh, he completely breaks. Oh, they think it's a real oh, one. Oh, they have a gem, they have a gem. Yeah, and they're going to find him. Oh, my God. Smash triggered the exorcism. The prop is going to TP in for this one, too. But it's a refresh orb. Ulti coming out from Snaking. There's so much damage out from him. There will be the Yule set drop and Smash. He still goes down. And that ultimate from Snaking. Masoko on nine life points. He's just happy to nagger at the Mud Golems right now. The plants are field. It's in range. 
It's in range, you'll pick him up. Even the Wind oh Ranger. Oh my gosh. 55 life points. Now, the trade off is also nothing. I thought they might have picked one up on the back end of play, but they've lost Jakiro. They've lost Nature's Prophet, who was the one who was trying to battle for that one, jumping behind the lines. And there's still another 10 seconds to 15 seconds away from a Roshan spawn timer. So they can't take Roshan from this, which I think was what Navi US really, really wanted. They yeah. know he, he spawns in the next 30 seconds. Oh man, this Razor. Oof. <laughs> he. Wait for oh it, Korok. Wait for him. it. There it is. They can see him. They're going to be quick. This is Aegis and Cheese. If they can get an Im immortality onto a sniper and give a cheese over to someone like a Razor, this is huge for him. But Snake isn't even coming. Now he's making his move over. They need his damage. Spectre has haunt in 54 seconds, but she's on the wrong side of the map. The Wind Ranger is the only one who could potentially try and like take this. But you've got the courier coming in to do a scout, and they're going to bring it down already. Well, where's the courier? Nope, turns around straight away. Saw the plasma field. The Aegis has taken. The cheese is picked up by Centaur for now, and even swiping out the bounty rune on the way out. They're taking everything they can to get themselves back into a winning position. They have repaired yeah. a 10,000 deficit over the last 10 minutes of gold. As far as experience goes, though, they've actually gone up by almost 15,000 in the last yeah. 10 minutes. Man, the power of that double Razor Ultimate. Oh my gosh. Agon Scepter, Refresher. That Razor Ultimate's actually doing... How much damage is that? 63 damage. Three three instances and Refresher makes it six. It's it's actually doing like 350 damage every second to a target that's next to him. And it might be unmitigated because it takes armor away with every hit. So it might at one point it'll actually do 400, maybe 500. Poof, you can't fight that hero right now, simply put. They weren't able to fight the Spectre before, but when you get a pick off on the Death Prophet like that, you drop 2,000 life points off the Death Prophet before you get his exorcism properly starts ticking off on targets, and you've got yourself a fight. And now you're sitting there with a bigger fight too, because you can give that, yes, yeah, so he'll have his You've got a uh, Vladimir's offering too, even put up by way too sexy. So he's giving his team everything he possibly can. And with another 3.6k gold in the bank there of snaking, what happens if this guy picks up... I, I don't know if you pick up a heart at the end of this, or would you just go straight in for a butterfly? Actually, um, out of out of kind of like the heart pickup at this point, the reason being is, I think what should have happened is the Aegis should have gone, gone on Korok, because snaking had more money anyway. And mm. it's very clear from these fights that he's not the one that's getting focused. And yeah, and then he would have been able to pick up the next big item. I mean, this is okay too. He can get the Aegis and the boots to travel, but I don't know. I think it would have been better on the sniper. Yeah, that, that's the that's the hero I thought it was going to go on, considering Korok is just so easily sniped off, and you can put the cheese yeah. into the razor. The Centaur's yeah, going to survive anyway because he's walking around with four stuff and and a freaking BKB heart. Uh, that's still 3.6k life points over on a Centaur, who's yeah, meant man. to initiate and take the tank anyway. Like, At I, this I point still in the game. The cheese on him, though. Yeah, at this point in the game, anybody who actually attacks the Centaur will find themselves dying first. <laughs> it's gotten to that point. So I'm, I'm still not quite sure who has this in late game. Because you're, you're a racks and a half up for NOT, and you're running a Krob and a Spectre. A Spectre who's great well, at split pushing, and a Prophet who... Actually, I, I'm not feeling the presence of Mihawk oh. on this map. Orchid, Scythe, and Blade Mal with a Blink Dagger. Well, whoopity doo yeah, but needs... it's, it's not doing as much as even the Rubik, who's like he's able to do like a full counter push with just one stolen ability. Mm -hmm. He, this profit for him to scale into this point in the game right now, he needs to get rid like of the Blade Mal. in mid. The BTs are being used right now by Razor, and I think they got a glimpse. They got a glimpse of the Wind Ranger. She's got Blink as well as Four Star for just let off one power shot and then blink away. But they came very close. They're trying to gank up during the nighttime phase when the fog of war is just so restricted on Navi yeah, US. Yeah, and not only that, Toby, they're trying to gank up against Aegis and Cheese. I I can't support this decision. Like, Smash, what he did at the bottom lane, that should have been a tell for him saying, okay, I know I got these in this room, but honestly, I, I died last time. I'm a four slot of Death Prophet at 53 minutes. I should just farm a little bit more and get my fifth or sixth item. Yep. He really needs the fifth and sixth slot to fight up against this Razor and Sniper right now. He's falling so far behind. Agreed. You notice to the items which are coming out from Navi US, there's so much more focused on capitalizing on map control. Yeah. With, with BTs being purchased up by both Razor and now the Centaur, these two heroes, these two major core heroes, want to always be there. And maybe it's not just always being there once, it's being there twice. If you can TP in after as well. Mm -hmm. 
this oh nice pickup by Spectre. Finally the defusal blade kicks in and I Pick guess the only real item he's missing is the butterfly, but it it might be too little too late, honestly. Yeah. This razor is still super fat and his farm is not getting hindered. Of course Croc is the same story. Whose mana is he really gonna be restricting here? I... Well it's it's just the burn itself, right? You can take down a True. Spectre uh, yeah, you can kill the sniper as well as the VX and Rubik so much faster. And of course your Manta Illusions being on top of a sniper helps so much more with the mana burn as well. So it's it's a really important item for any Illusion to hero to get that by the late game. Or even the mid game. I don't know, I just would have flagged uh, Butterfly being a little bit further up there. Uh, primarily just because of the fact the sniper didn't go on Monkey King bar. And there's no one to stun, yeah. stun through that. So he knows he can evade a large portion of the damage which just wants to sit in the back lines and pound into him. I know snaking is obviously still a major problem. But mm -hmm. at the same well, time, like, fair, what, you what's, know, what's um, the VS and a Rubik going to do up against these illusions if they start pushing too? That's when your mana star kicks in. Yeah, and of course, Butterfly does have that new mechanic with the Flutter. That that thing is really amazing, by the way. It mm -hmm. solves all the problems that Butterfly gave you by being hard countered by one item that's cheaper than it, which is the Monkey King Bar. You can actually just run away from targets with the Flutter, and it helps you chase down targets when you don't actually need the evasion. So it's pretty interesting, and I like that buff. But the thing against Sniper is Headshot makes, Headshot makes Butterfly kind of... I mean, it doesn't render it useless, but headshot ignores evasion. So, I mean, I guess there's that, you know. Should flag the fact now that the Agassi Mortal is uh, dis uh, disappeared. So the five minute mark is already uh, hit. So snaking, well, he's got 3.8k gold, which is unspent at the moment. Mm -hmm. And what's, he got coming, what's up coming up, the curry? He's actually bringing his uh, treads back. <laughs> this observer was coming back in, and he's going to bring his treads to uh, go with his BTs currently. <laughs> Waste not, want not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's putting it on strength threat so he can get the passive HP and the attack, attack speed bonus. Not bad, but he will eventually sell it for the sixth item. Also and that profit, to use, what does she have? They're, they're trying to use Centaur as bait. No one's biting on this. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna... After that team fight at bottom, they don't want to fight up against that Centaur right now. No Koros sorry. be so careful! Look how quick they came! Spectre Horn, proper TP in! And that Wind Ranger was right behind him. Sniper will go down. Buyback is available, but Koro came out just inch too far, and the rest of his teammates were a very long way away. He just thought maybe one creep wave. I could just kill off one creep wave. That's all I need. Mm -hmm. He really wants a BKB. I I'm pretty sure he really wants a BKB this game. He actually has enough damage, believe it or not, from all the procs. He really just needs to stay alive. And the fact that he didn't get Aegis is just a really critical... In my opinion, a very critical mistake, mistake of not the US. Pog is having a little bit of trouble up on top lane, but then oh, again, nice the slot from way too. The Yule Scepter will send him up, but that means they can't actually capitalize on that. But when Sneaking Trick is a BKB charge with ultimate, they want to back up. That is down to five seconds, but remember oh, he's got Mihawk. Refresher and Mihawk, he's trying to be sneaky. They four staff down the Centaur. The buyback comes out from the Sniper. He's already TPing north because the Exorcism is bringing down the tower. It fortifies up, so they buy themselves a little bit of time, but then Nestle, he caught out Mystico in the mid lane. Four staff away, the Blind is coming off cooldown, the Assassination's on the way, and it will connect. The Wind Ranger will go down, the bottom melee ranked is still, uh, range ranks being brought down by just, well, damn Treants. They get sliced up, however, but that range rank is slowly being chipped away, and only one hero was lost then by NOT. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, I have to say, NOT is playing this perfectly. They're actually playing this... Perfectly. It's and it's okay for this Windrunner to die at this stage. You forced out a buyback, which makes Sniper even more wary of the fact that if he dies again, game's over. And then the other thing is Windrunner probably has buyback. In this case, he doesn't, but it's still okay because he's not a critical critical unit when it comes to holding the base as much as Death Prophet and Spectre yeah, and Jakiro are. Your only problem is going to be, though, like, you're losing these heroes. Your exorcism is down for a very long time. I think that's the reason that's why Navi thing. US are bringing everybody in. You don't have yeah. a refresher orb on the Death Prophet because she bought a Shiva's Guard instead. So it's a 4.4k gold, so you get a lot of tank ability, but without the ultimate, the Razor rules the push waters right now. And Sneaking, this is refresher time, man. Uh, he's got his BKB, which I think he's trying to wait out a little bit longer. Wait for the fortification to go down, and then can just, well, BKB once, use refresher, and bring down the racks. They just keep the push going. And this is kind of racks. Prophecy being up towards the top to try and go for a counter, but Sneaking turns on the heat. He'll bring down this mid while up on top lane. Mihawk, he's got the tier 3 tower down. And Navi US want to back up. They've lost their nice bottom job, lane. Nice the Spectre Horn's going to come, but who do they really find here? The TP got out from Mihawk. He blew himself into the tree line. He got away to safety. Well, now you get the VS caught out. Way too. Will go down. The Death Brother waits a little bit of time with him, but they got a shackle on Korok. Yeah, there it is. That's a bigger one. With no Spectre, Sneaking will trigger his BKB again and get himself away to safety. 
but they've lost two sets of ranks right now. They've got one collateral ranks, but the sniper is down for a very long time. Four minutes on the yeah. buyback cooldown, and NOT are coming in with Exism up in eight seconds time. Honestly, that's why that push is just almost impossible. Even though the Razor's contested, their other carry is not. They're gonna fight. The day, Sneaking comes in. The Hawk stomps the double edge. The Keeper Jakiro out of this fight for the moment. They've almost got him down, they do. In fact, they've managed to get some kind of collateral, but they've lost the Rubik. Mior came in Snaking. from behind him with the Orc and it's snaking. He's down too. He'll buy back straight away. While Nessel trying to actually distract the creep wave by dragging him up. He'll be Yulsa dropping towards the air. Drop down now. The silence is on him. You got Snaking coming back into the creep wave, but he's still going to lose his Centaur, who now will also buy back. The Shackle won't be able to latch, but Sneaking copying a lot of damage. He does have the Centaur all now, and a Hoof Stomp in for a double Hoof Stomp with a double edge fall, but Smash, he tanked up the entire thing with the Exorcism coming back at the same time they initiated. Sneaking can't get himself that's... away. He's down for two minutes, and GG is the call. Navi US will be knocked down by the Peruvians into the lower bracket, and Peru is now sitting in a position where. Well, they're two victories away from traveling to Bucharest to compete at DreamHack and the D2CL Land Finals. Yep, the, the Smash, Iwo, and these Mystico and these guys, you know, they've been around for a very long time. They're making waves, not so much in terms of Power Rangers or I guess X game kind of style. They're not facing too many tier one teams at the moment, but what they are doing is in their own region, in their own area, they're standing up for their own fight. And they have succeeded this game. There was a, it was a pretty back and forth game. But I think I really do think there was a critical point in time where Navi US they had that they had that Roshan and they had the turnaround fights they were looking for in the Radiant Chongo. And they didn't give Aegis to arguably the most important pickoff because Razor wouldn't die in that situation. And unfortunately the sniper did. So I think I think that sealed the deal against them. And as soon as they try to push, they would just have this rat problem that they can't deal with against the Furion. Well, for now, ma'am, that's going to wrap up uh, our first series, but there's another one coming up in just a couple of moments' time. We go to the other American favorite. I say favorite because Navi US and Sneaky Nix Assassins were the ones people probably thought were going to go straight into the winner's bracket final. I'm fairly certain uh, rares were lost this day. In fact, if I, if I have a quick double check of that one too, how many rares were lost? Okay, someone hit the big time, man. Navi US at 84% over on Dota 2 Lounge. 16% of people bet on not today. Rewarding has been there. There's an 80 80 20 percent going the way of SNA in the next game We'll see if rares will again be lost stay tuned. We'll be back here in a couple moments time for our last series of the night